glory to God. I want to welcome everyone to another one of our sessions on uh, manifesting success or manifested success is really what we're teaching on. We've been teaching on this for a while and we'll continue to teach on it until the Lord instructs us to go and move on. We had, uh, in teaching this, the Lord had given us five things that we were going to teach on in this course and on manifesting the success that we have manifested in Christ Jesus that we were going to start with salvation. We taught on that for quite a while and then revelation of the Holy Spirit as to what we have received in our salvation. And then implementation, we just got through teaching on that. And now we come to something called appreciation. And that's as important, I, I almost want to say more important than any other part of the process of manifesting the success that we have manifested in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now what I want you to hold on to, really hold on to, is we're not trying to get success. We're not trying to become successful. We are successful. We have succeeded. Above all the people of the earth, we have succeeded. Now what we're studying is how to go about manifesting, bringing out our success so that it can be seen by others. Amen. And to, by doing this, fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives. We are successful. You have success. And if you don't realize this, you'll spend your whole life trying to do something that it is impossible for you to do. You cannot become successful if you are successful. It, it, you guys understanding what I'm saying? This is Satan's trick. This is what he does. And it's one of the best illustrations that I can give you right now. Everyone in here, you guys agree to, to go along with me. I'm going to ask you to do something. You'll do it. It's nothing harmful. It's nothing that's detrimental to you. You guys agree that you, you'll help me out in this? You'll do what I ask you to do? Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want every one of you, we're gonna get 100% on this, okay? I want every one of you to sit down. Look around. Not a single one of you doing anything. Y'all agreed, didn't, it? didn't we all agree? We came into agreement on this. You're not fighting me on it. But no one's doing anything. It's done. You are successful. And trying to become successful is just like trying to sit down in a chair you're already seated in. Satan never wants you to realize, I am successful. Say, so, well, look at your bank. My bank account doesn't determine my success. My health doesn't determine my success. There's one thing needed for success, and that's salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you got saved, glory to God, you made it. Glory to God. You're going to be successful all of your existence throughout the eternity of eternities. You'll manifest and enjoy the benefits of the success that you have in Christ Jesus. Now, we want to keep this in the forefront of our mind. What Jesus said, what does it profit a person if they should gain the whole world and lose their soul. Without Jesus, without salvation, what would you call success? 
How long are we going to be dead in this physical body? How, <coughs> how long is it going to stay dead? This one forever. It's going back to dust, what it was created from. But what about the spirit that inhabits it? Where is it going to be throughout all of eternity? Well, I sure don't want any part of the lake of fire. I mean, you'd think hell would be bad enough. But even hell itself is going in the lake of fire. Can, can, you call, can anyone call that success? Give me something that's successful outside of salvation. That's why Jesus asked the people the question, says, what price would you take? What, what, what price would you put on your soul? You'd sell your soul. What value could you get in exchange? And everything you get would be what? Temporal, temporary. And everything you get, you're gonna leave here. I have yet, I think I'm gonna be the first person that has a hearse with a U-Haul behind it. I'm gonna get someone brave enough to do it. <laughs> That's just like what they'll do at the, at the rental place. <laughs> when you drive it, <clears throat> you, you drive into you drive into a rental place and ask them to hook up a uh, trailer to your hearse. <laughs> yeah, I got some things I'm going to take with me. So, <laughs> uh, no, it's all going to be left here. So, it's something that we want to do this week. We've been going over this, and last week we were going over some things that, that I learned later needed to be explained in greater detail or greater depth. And that was this thing about praying. Jesus said, whatsoever thing you ask for in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And so, turn to Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. That's where that scripture is. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Anyone's Bible indicate that Jesus is the one teaching? Okay, and he said, and what, and it says, in all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. How many things? So the only thing you have to do if you want something is ask in prayer, believing. Believing what? Huh? I can't hear you guys. That you receive it. What is the it? That's where we're right back to the same thing. Huh? What things soever you ask for, and if you ask believing, then you shall receive it. That seems to be pretty plain, huh? Till you start to dissect it a little bit. If I'm asking in prayer, then I'm believing that God hears me. Is that right? Okay. And does he hear all of our prayers? That's a yes or no question. <laughs> does he hear all of our prayers? No. Okay. Why is it that he would not hear some of our prayers? Not believing? Well, not believing would keep you from receiving. But the not hearing, because it's not according to his will, right? So if it's not according to his will, he's not going to hear us. So give me some things that you could ask for, for yourself, 
that would be asking in accordance with his will. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Wisdom and understanding. What about if you want a car? Or a house? I have one that says he still wants you to ask for it. We already have wisdom, we have Jesus. See, we need to be able to, in our minds, get this straightened out so that we're not asking, as the scripture says, asking amiss. Is that right? So, just taking what Jesus said, if we ask, believing. Well, if I believe, that you have already given me something and then I ask for it again do I believe you gave it to me the first time you told me? Hmm? No. You could be asking in ignorance being not stupid, ignorant, just not knowledgeable of the fact that it's already been given to me that's why we come to church. That should be why we come to church. We want to know what we have in Christ Jesus, who we are in Christ Jesus, what we can do in Christ Jesus, so that we're not destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And there are people that come to church, but they don't want to hear a message like this. They want to know if you have a good choir. I mean, this is just the reality. This is just the reality of it. Hmm? We have excellent choir. We are the choir. <laughs> but there are people that reject knowledge. Have we, heard, have we heard this of someone going to a church that was teaching? They teach too long? They teach too much. So I don't go to that church. I mean, we've heard this stuff. And the pity of it is the scripture says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. And then thank God for Jesus because in the Old Testament he says, you rejected the knowledge, not only are you going to be rejected, your children after you are going to be rejected. Thank God for Jesus, this doesn't fall on our children. This is on us. But if we're the ones setting the example for our children, let me share something with you too, that one of the things without realizing it, we kind of look and we get really caught up in our children and wanting our children to do right and be right, which we should, but the attack is really on your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. See, the attack on our children started back with their grandparents and their great-grandparents. So Satan's really not looking at the next generation. He's looking three or four generations down. And if you want to know what's going on, you want to look at your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, what's happening with them. That's why it says a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. See, we get these things in order so that we can live victoriously, manifesting the success we have. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. You could ask if you would win the lottery, believing that you would receive it. You could do that. But would God hear you? This is really the question, because see, it says when you ask in prayer, and this asking 
or the word prayer and asking here is put together not just asking like I would ask you as a contemporary. You know, we both have cars and stuff that I borrow you. We know, let's trade cars. I'm asking you something. No, it's more like me coming to you. I don't even have bus fare. You're so far off and better than me. You got two or three cars. I don't even have the bus fare, and I'm asking you for something. It's the idea this asking is going to the Father with an attitude of, I am completely and totally inferior to you, dependent upon you, and with you in your grace and in your mercy, from your position of superiority, bestow upon me what I'm asking you for. That's what happens, see, when you get involved in studying the word. You find out things like this. This is not a parallel asking. This is the asking of an inferior to a superior. Now that's the attitude. So if, is it possible if I don't ask with that attitude, I'm asking a mess? Yes? He hasn't promised for you to win the lottery. Right, that, that's what I'm saying. Would he hear you? When you ask, that's, that's what we want to know. When we ask him for something, will he hear me? Is this part of his will for me? Has he already done this? Does he want me to have this? Does he want me to do that? If he wanted me to have it, I'd already have it because he's given us all things. Is a lottery the, a thing? A lotto ticket or the money from a lottery, is that considered a thing? Yes. Well, why am I asking him for something if he's already given it to me? I can't be asking believing. No, it doesn't have to. I have given you all things. The lottery is a thing. He, if he would have to have a, a, a Bible just on that section with every word that pertain to every different thing. He says all things. How many things does that leave out? Is the lottery a thing? Then he has already given us. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Yeah, you'd have to buy a ticket. Is it a chance that you could win the lottery if you bought a ticket? Hmm? I mean, it is a chance. It is possible. But you aren't believing God for it. You're believing chance and circumstances happen up on all, and this is going to be your turn. And they're going to pull your ticket. You're already rich. I mean, all of these things, that, as far as we're talking about God now doing it God's way and doing it the world's way. And we don't want to mix the two up because that'll get us confused. We'll ask amiss. You go out and get three jobs? You're going to be really tired. <laughs> <laughs> He won't stop you. But what he told us to do was to rest in him. Amen. And so this is what we want to find out. Not just roll the dice. This could be true, it couldn't be true. Well, it's either true or it's false. I want to know the truth. Jesus said, I've come to bring to you the truth. He says, because Satan has lied to the whole world. He's lied. And if we believe the lie, we're going to reap the benefits of the lie. People sign, are there people, if you, could, you could just go online and Google right now, there are people still making pacts with the devil. 
different industries that we look at and see on television and stuff, they're making packs. Some of these people, whether it works or doesn't work, I'm not talking about that. It's just the things that people believe. People believe a whole array of things. We want to believe our God. And Jesus said he came to the earth to bring us the truth.